Hi, I'm Charlie Rodman, Austin criminal defense attorney, and today I want to go over the timeline of a DWI arrest uh, as it relates to blood alcohol content. Okay, so I want to show you the, the times uh, when uh, the prosecution or the police get uh, your blood alcohol content. So first you've got the stop, okay, or the first police contact, okay, so they either pull you over or you're already pulled over but you're operating the car or there's been some sort of crash or something like that. So the police have contact with you. After that, there's generally a, a brief little conversation, you know, from the police officer, where are you going, can I see your ID, that type of thing. Um, and then they, uh, if they suspect that you've been drinking or, or are intoxicated, uh, the DWI investigation begins. Um, after that, they're going to ask you to do field sobriety tests, and uh, that's the, you know, walk and turn, the one leg stand, the, the eye test, the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Anyway, they're going to go through that process, uh, or try to get you to go through that process. Um, and at the end of it, typically in Travis County here, um, they'll offer you a portable breath test. Okay, so we refer to that as the PBT. Um, not all agencies do it, not all officers do it, but they will frequently do this uh, handheld uh, portable breath test. Um, now, they will tell you that this uh, isn't going to be considered in your case, um, but it kind of will. The prosecutors will see it, uh, the judge can see it. The only scenario, the only people that don't get to see it are, are the jury, if there's a jury trial. So they're a little deceptive about, about this test. Um, but uh, it, it's true that it doesn't count towards the level of offense, okay? So they can't use that to, to say it's a class A, B.15 or above, um, but the prosecutors will definitely see the result of this PBT. Now, uh, after that, uh, they're gonna arrest you, and they're gonna arrest you basically if you blow anything higher than a .05, okay? That's the general policy right now, um, which doesn't even seem fair, right? If you blow below the limit, but um, that is the policy currently of APD. And, and the reason is you can be intoxicated on other things in addition to the alcohol, uh, you know, so drugs or, or, uh, or you've just lost the normal use of your mental physical faculties even at a point of five. Anyway, um, I could talk about that for a long time, but we're gonna keep going here. Um, the next thing that happens is a drive to the station. Um, and that can be anywhere from 10 minutes to 45 minutes. Um, and then there's voluntary breath or blood, okay? They're gonna, uh, generally they'll ask you a little bit earlier, but, but uh, basically it's there's where you decide are you gonna voluntarily blow or voluntarily give blood. Um, if you refuse, okay, then they're gonna get a warrant. Um, and they do that 90% of the time now, all days, okay? So there's, everyone's heard of no refusal weekend. It's basically no refusal anytime now. There's always a judge available to sign a warrant. Um, they don't do it 100% of the time for various reasons, but 90% of the time they're gonna get a warrant and then they'll do the blood draw. Okay, so the, the voluntary breath or blood and the blood draw there at the end, of, those are the ones that will count towards the level of offense and those would be the ones that a jury hears about if you go to the jury. Okay, so I do want to talk about the BAC uh, and um, reverse extrapolation, or they sometimes call it retrograde extrapolation. And that means uh, where um, the time, right, when you're driving is when it's illegal to be over the limit, okay? It's not illegal to be over the limit when you're at the police station, you know, 45 minutes or an hour later or, you know. So uh, the, the law or the, the prosecutors or the judge or the jury um, has to find that you were, um, or has to believe that you were uh, intoxicated at the time you're driving. So let's, let's sort of look at this um, curve here. And so if you've got a .08 there and a .15 there, okay. Um, if you're driving here, Okay, by the time you give voluntary breath or blood or they take your blood, it could be up there, meaning um, you're driving at 0.07 and they take your blood, and, but it shows up as a 0.11, okay, because of the time that it took the alcohol um, or the time, uh, during the time that you're uh, between driving and getting the breath or blood, the alcohol is absorbing into your system. Okay, now this is in a scenario where you're, where you're going up, okay, the, the alcohol level is going up. So you have another scenario where you're driving at say 0.14, but they take your breath or blood here, okay, and it's gonna be much higher than when you were driving. Now, 
The prosecutors are more likely to argue the other way, that you're coming down, so you're driving up high, but the breath of their blood is lower than where you were when you were driving. Or here, you're driving here and the breath of blow, uh, blood is down there. So uh, the point is really that there's no way for anybody to determine exactly what you were, the level you were when you were driving, okay? Um, and the only real scenario that uh, it's equal is in this scenario where you're driving and you're just sort of right at the level and, and the breath of blood is not far away from when you were driving uh, in terms of it's just coming down a little bit. Um, now, this, the prosecutor is going to argue this curve is too steep, okay, and that it should be a lot flatter. And, but, you know, really nobody knows how you uh, process alcohol. Um, so this is just sort of to show you some of the issues uh, with uh, blood alcohol content in a DWI case. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, just give us a call.